Hello, I'm Quentin Collins, author of the forthcoming poetry collection, The Dandelion Speaks of Survival. Today I want to talk about black barbershops. Um, like many of us, I have not been to a barbershop in months. Actually, I haven't been since January due to the pandemic. And while I've on many occasions let my hair grow out into an afro and um, more recently started letting my beard grow out, I mean, at least once during the pandemic I had to do the pandemic cut thing and I shaved it all off, but now it's back in the stage of growth. And I've come to think a lot about, you know, what the Black Barbershop has meant for our community, especially after seeing some um, work that's being put forth by a photographer named Philip Keith. And we had a very short interaction on social media and email to kind of talk about, you know, what this space means for us in terms of not only community, but masculinity. So today what I want to do is I want to read one of the poems that's going to be in the book called The Barber Chair. And then I also want to read a book, a poem from a book by um, Hanif um, Willis Abdur Kib, uh, The Crown Ain't Worth Much, and the poem is called Dispatches from the Black Barber Shop, Tony's Chair. Um, it's a, part of a series of four poems throughout the book, and it was one of the works that was instrumental for me getting close to this poem existing. Uh, one of the big things that I've always wanted to do is write a poem about what the barber shop meant in terms of that community space and growth, especially um, for myself, because I didn't start getting my hair cut at a barbershop until I was in high school. Um, my first instance being uh, after my eighth grade career, I had my cousin take me to a barbershop in Chicago, and that was my first experience ever going, and then I had been going ever since. And then getting to college on the north side of Chicago and having so much trouble finding a barber who knew how to handle black hair. And one of the struggles I had with those poems is finding the space that was between not only reverence, but also interrogating the space and what it means for the community. And I'm going back to that conversation you know, that I had with Philip Keith talking about uh, what does masculinity look like in the space of the barbershop? Because it's something that's very different and very contained. And the interactions there, um, when you look at them, have some very interesting implications. So wanting to find that kind of in-between space of let's talk about how great this space is and how much there's some closeness and togetherness, but also Let's interrogate what it really means. So I'm going to read um, Hanif's poem first, and then I'm going to read my poem. And then I'm going to talk a bit about, you know, again, that inspiration and what I was trying to work at with, with my poem, The Barber Chair. Dispatches from the Black Barber Shop, Tony's Chair, 2003. I guess they ain't cutting hair in them college town you little niggas live in these days. Nigga, you got naps reaching for the whole sky. Bet your mama up there with that black pick she used to taste you down the block with. I ain't make the funeral because Big Mike got buried that same day. I see you got a little beard now, nigga. What, you think you're growing anyway? You know niggas gotta choose what funerals we go to these days. Shit feel like we just moving dirt from on top of one dead body to another. Feel like heaven just got all our mamas and brothers and them niggas from the corner up there around one big table talking about how much they missed the hood you seen that coffee shop they put where miss tammy's full food spot used to be right down the block miss tammy's ain't been there since her man stopped coming home last winter you know when all that snow came through some niggas just chase after the sun and don't ever come back when they find it but now that coffee shop got all those white folk coming around Lift your chin up, bro. Yeah, my girl said the hood gonna be all right, but I swear the shadow on that coffee shop be growing every day. Swear that shit be getting darker with each sunrise. Saw it stretch over some niggas on Livingston, and when it went away, they was just gone like they got swallowed by some other kind of black. Niggas ain't drinking coffee. Niggas don't need to be any more awake. Niggas seem too much death to sleep. I ain't slept since they tore down the school and built a new graveyard. I ain't slept since my son got that toy gun for Christmas. My hands still steady. I still got my name on this door. My girl said the hood gonna be all right. And this is my poem, The Barber Chair. At the neck nape, hair clippers coo. Susserations as they spill hair, tingle trickles down to toes, breast massages loose hairs from scalp, and every atom rocks into a tide. Daydream drifts, eyes flicker like the box television that plays Friday on BET, static rippled lull, 
barber cup chin, fingers center the forehead. Across the hairline, he charts a path, squats, lips aligned for a moment. He takes a call from his wife. He teases through receiver. He hangs up, unsheathes razor blade. Edge cruises skin, he cuts in on a veteran's story of women in Vietnam who bathed men with their bodies. Curiosity erect, all men listen, every clipper holds its tongue. Ears warm, head cold and unfinished. Blade clean, remain so until the vet leaves. Stories wet in every mouth, playboy play by play savored like the vet savors his past fuck. Blade gripped, the barber leans back in. Geometry whispers to hairline, then throat. Elsewhere, only a woman gets this close to your blood. So one of the things I really enjoy about Dispatches from the Black Barber Shop is the fact that the poem doesn't have any punctuation in it. And it very much mirrors this, there's like this energy and pace to a, a black barber shop where there's so much that's happening. I remember in my earliest days of going to a barber shop, your barber is talking to you, your barber is on the phone with somebody, maybe your barber is stopping what he's doing to go play Xbox with other barbers in the shop or other patrons. There's just a lot that's happening and a lot of movement and energy that's going there. And I feel like the poem really captures that when it doesn't have the punctuation, so everything is just kind of moving very quickly. And, um, you know, you have those points where, you know, the speaker tells um, the addressee, you know, hold your chin up a bit, where we kind of get those interjections of, you know, where the chaos and the energy of the space is interrupted once more with the nature of what's there to be done, you know, the haircut that needs to happen. And so the way I wanted to kind of really learn from this poem and recreating that space was for me to think about what was the chaos and energy of the narrative um, of the poem. And for me, this was at, you know, being at a barber shop um, on the north side of Chicago, one that I visited in my undergraduate years and some years after, where we had this instance of the usual rockets of the shop. While on most days it was typically a little bit quieter because the aesthetic was a little more, um, the owner preferred to be a little more high end. Uh, some days, yeah, we, we kind of reclined back into our, our other selves and we really had a lot of fun and joy that was happening. And on this particular day with a lot of the smack talking that comes with it, um, there was this, you know, older black gentleman who was a Vietnam vet who was in getting a haircut and he was telling this very um, interesting story about his experiences, um, sexual experiences in Vietnam. And just thinking about the fact that, you know, everything very much stopped in the shop. Every person who was there wanted to, you know, hear this. Um, and then, of course, there were a lot of jokes and a lot of rockets that followed afterward as people kind of recapped what was said and retold even after he left. And um, I just remember there was a point where um, my barber, the owner, just kind of stopped and looked at a, a customer who was newer and said, hey, like, we don't really do this every day. This isn't a normal thing for us. We're, you know, generally pretty, you know, chill. And he was, of course, meant that jokingly. But it was interesting that we kind of entered this space of shared intimacy. And then um, not only did we pull out of it, but we pulled out of it in a way that, it, you know, involved humor and kind of eased things. And thinking about what that meant in terms of, you know, that moment of vulnerability where in a lot of ways, many of the men in the shop may not let themselves really dig into that space of intimacy in that manner um, with other men outside of a space like that where we can be comfortable. Uh, but also addressing what that type of intimacy and masculinity can mean in terms of how we don't, you know, interrogating the reasons we don't and why that in itself is a problem. And that's what really led me to the final line of um, my poem, The Barber Chair, is that this is a level of intimacy that we often, as black men, don't let ourselves feel outside of certain safe spaces. And so, you know, what happens when we capture that energy and when a little bit of it spills out, you know, even the idea of the barber talking in some more intimate ways to his wife while on the phone and cutting your hair at the same time and occupying a lot of close physical space with you as the customer while this is all happening. 
Um, it's just, it's just a place where like a lot of guards are let down and a lot of closeness that's not a, we don't allow to happen elsewhere just comes through. So I just really want to make sure like you know how can the poem do that, and that's what I wanted to interrogate. You know the references we do have a group of black men in the shop who are enjoying the story, this interaction, having some joy, but also understanding what those bigger implications are. And I think that in terms of the series of poems in this book from um, Hanif, the dispatches from the Black Barbershop poems, we, we get a bit of that. You know, he talks a lot about, you know, what's happening out in the community and how all of that is interjected into the space of the barbershop as if the two are inseparable and as if his barber is also inseparable from the community. And as any of those changes come up, it affects all the spaces and even the spaces where we are most vulnerable and where we feel comfortable talking to somebody about such things. I mean, I think that in terms of life advice and really asking some hard-hitting questions about, you know, what kind of things I want to do with myself throughout the years, a lot of that conversation has happened with barbers I've had, uh, especially in conversations about, you know, romance. Uh, not just in the most intimate, romantic, or sexual nature, but, you know, hey, there's a person who I'm really interested in. What do you think about um, pursuing this relationship further? What's your wisdom on, you know, long-term relationships and how to maintain those? A lot of those things happen in these spaces. And so I, I think that we, you know, again, need that reverence, but we need to also understand, you know, when we get into that interrogation, we understand the interiority in the exterior world of the barbershop and how the two blend, um, you know, what happens as we, the individual, whether we are the speaker in the poem or the addressee and the speakers, you know, talking about what's happening inside and outside, how do we move in, in and out of those spaces and how can we make that happen in the poem? You know, and again, I think the lack of punctuation in this poem kind of lends to the fact that the space of the barbershop, as it's represented in text, is also unrestricted from what's happening inside and what's happening outside. And that's something where we can kind of look at how form is really bringing that forward. So again, thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you want to check out this book, I highly recommend you do. It's definitely one of my top poetry collections of all time. And um, keep an eye out for my book, which is coming at some point in 2021. Again, that's The Dandelion Speaks of Survival. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.